Hi, I'm Bill and welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. And if you've been here before, thanks for returning. So uh, today's another exciting day for me. Today I am trading my t-shirt, paper, rubber band, and my Samsung tablet. And I'm incorporating now into my uh, workflow the Pegasus Flatmaster 150. So in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to take flats and dark flats using the Pegasus uh, Flatmaster 150 with Nina. Last night, I had a clear sky, I went outside and I took some images of the Rosette Nebula. Uh, I'm still working on a few things. Uh, you probably can't see here, but this is the new item I also added. That's the ZWO electronic autofocuser. So um, I'm not sure that I got that dialed in yet. You'll see another video that I'll uh, put out uh, from last night's work uh, that I wanted to share with you. Uh, but anyway, today's video uh, is uh, retiring the t-shirt rubber band, sheets of paper, and, uh, and uh, the tablet. Now, I always like to preface this by, you use what you use. And I use that tablet, and while it took some additional effort, it got the job done. So, you know, and like everyone, mon money's always a consideration. So, uh, you know, my recommendation is use what you have, but through this video, I want to share with you um, what you could have in a sense if you wanted to go in this direction and you had the money. I purchased this uh, Pegasus for $202 from High Point Scientific in, uh, in New Jersey. Uh, so anyway, um, let's get started. I'm going to drop down into the chair and then we'll step through Nina. Okay. So I'm sitting comfortably in my chair and what you should see on the screen is Nina. Um, I have the camera connected. Uh, I am cooling the camera down, the ASI 294mm Pro monochrome camera. I am going to cool it down, although Charles uh, Bracken, uh, that I'm, I'm using his book, Deep Sky Imaging uh, Primer, uh, on page 90 he has a table related to calibration frames and he says your flats and uh, flat darks could be taken at any uh, temperature, but I've decided to cool the camera down to the temperature I used last night. Uh, I was able to get some images in last night of uh, the Rosette Nebula. Uh, I also did an automated uh, uh, Meridian flip. Uh, I'm putting together some footage on that, uh, but uh, again, the focus on this one is uh, how I'm retiring the uh, t-shirt, rubber bands, pieces of paper, and tablet for the uh, Pegasus Flatmaster 150. So, okay, uh, the camera's cooling. Um, I also have the filter wheel connected. And then if we come down here, I have the uh, Flatmaster connected. And you'll see here that I did some, uh, I rehearsed a little bit. Uh, generally, I don't do that, but I wanted to make sure um, everything was going to work if I was going to do this demo. And uh, so there's the um, data from the from the last run. And one thing I want to say about this ASI 294mm uh, uh, Pro uh, camera is it has two bin modes. And depending on what bin mode you're in, it changes the uh, pixel size. So... I thought last night I was in bin 2 and therefore I had the larger pixel size. I'm really not sure. So again, I'm a beginner to begin with and then I am uh, decided to make the challenge a little bit more difficult by going into a uh, dedicated uh, AstroCam. And so, um, so I'm learning. So okay, so seems like those key pieces that we need to have connected are connected. And uh, so let's go into the flat wizard. So, um, in the flat wizard, um, there's single mode and then there's multi mode. So, 
I'm doing uh, two filters because last night I shot uh, some exposures with the H alpha and I also took a few with the red uh, filter. So let's, uh, um, red is on. Oh, uh, okay, let me go back here. All right, so we're we talking about luminous is off. We're going to turn H alpha on. Okay, that is on. And again, um, we have uh, various uh, settings here uh, for minimum exposure, uh, max exposure, and, and uh, step size. So these are different than the default, and I guess they are set the way they're set based upon the last run. So uh, let's see what happens here. So again, we're in multi-mode. We have red selected and we have H alpha selected. And then what we should expect is it's going to take five uh, flats of the red filter, then move on to take five flats of H alpha. And then it's going to ask me to put the uh, lens cap on and then do the flat darks uh, for each filter. This is what I expect. So let's see what happens. So now it's trying to determine the best uh, exposure, and uh, for the red filter, and now it's doing it for the uh, H-alpha filter, and it looks like uh, it's going to use an exposure of 13.98 seconds for the H-alpha and we don't have the mean uh, ADU setting yet. Okay, it has an ADU of 32,654. Uh, I asked it to try to achieve 32,768 uh, with a uh, tolerance of 10%. So you'll notice I'm not having to adjust any light. I'm not having to put more pieces of paper in between my tablet and a t-shirt or take pieces of paper out. Uh, it appears to me that Nina is managing my flat master as far as uh, brightness uh, and then is also managing the uh, change in uh, filters uh, and uh, the optimum uh, exposure times. Now again when taking flats I've always heard that you should at least have uh, a flat of one second. Um, Again, I'm a beginner. I don't know if that is true or not, so I'm still trying to run that piece down. Um, right now, I'm relying on uh, Nina to make the right decisions. And so, okay, one more, one more image here. Okay, now it wants me to cover scope. Of course, I've removed the flat master, covered the scope, and then Nina will use the exposure times for the flats uh, for the uh, flat darks. So, my um, I'm starting to make some progress. I still don't feel I am uh, have really good data sets yet with the uh, uh, 294mm, the ZWO uh, monochrome camera yet. Uh, I expected it would take some time for me to work with that item. And then also I've incorporated in uh, autofocus. Um, I'm not seeing what I expect to see in the autofocus graph when the autofocus has been completed. So, you know, I, I've changed several variables, and uh, I just need to work through that. And what I need is more time outside at night with clear skies, and hopefully that'll be, uh, those clear nights will be coming. Um, I want to make sure I kind of have everything dialed in before I start uh, collecting what I would call good data sets that then I would uh, invest the time to process. 
with an expectation that I'd get a good image. So um, I do think my guiding error is in a reasonable uh, ballpark. All right, so let's take a look at these. And here are the flats. Uh, first, the red flats. All right, and then if we bring up the histogram, uh, we're right in the center. Um, and then we'll step through uh, a red, red, still on the red, still on the red. Again, we'll check the histogram. Again, it's uh, consistently staying in the middle. I think this is the last of the five reds. And now we're in the uh, H-alpha. We're at the 13.98 uh, uh, seconds uh, exposure. Um, and again, we'll look at that histogram. I believe that's where it's supposed to be. Or at least this is where I'm setting it to start with. And as I acquire additional information, then um, you know I'll adjust if uh, if necessary. Okay, so uh, that is the flats. Now let's look at the dark flats. First, the reds. And again, I'll just, we're all the way over at the uh, left edge. Okay, now we're into the H alpha. And again, on our histogram, we're all the way over to the left where we would expect it to be. Okay, and then let's just go back up because uh, we have some information in the equipment. Um, and then I believe what this is telling us is that for the reds, it used an exposure time of 0.47 seconds. Again, I've, you know, I've seen some information that says the minimum exposure for your flats should be at least a second. Okay, so uh, maybe I'm not where I need to be yet but at least this lets me know what the exposure time was. Uh, and then uh, we see for the H alpha, it was 13.98 seconds. So um, again, um, the flat master, uh, this was $202. I made a decision to go with, um, I could have got this panel for, a panel like this for less and then I could have got a controller and I probably could have put something together for under a hundred dollars um, you know Pegasus is uh, a good name uh, they make some interesting uh, items that are helpful in the astrophotography area so I made a decision just to buy it uh, as a complete unit and and use it again um, can you get the job done with a t-shirt, rubber band, sheets of paper, and a tablet, or a tracing panel? Absolutely, many people do. So again, you know, use what you got. You know, everybody's budgets are different. Um, but I had the $200. I'm comfortable that what I spent uh, is going to provide me value as I go forward. Uh, so I'm happy with my purchase, but your, you know, uh, your result, your mileage may vary. Is that how they say it? So, okay. So if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up as always. Uh, thank you for dropping into the channel and, uh, I welcome new subscribers and to those of you that have taken a moment to subscribe, I sure appreciate your support and helping to build the community. And like always comments and questions are, are really helpful. Uh, and so I'm learning through those comments and hopefully if you're just dropping into the channel for the first time and you're a beginner, uh, uh, 
uh, I encourage you to uh, take a look at some of those comments and there might be knowledge nuggets in there that can help you as well. So that's about it. Until next time, take care.